nice to see everybody out tonight. We're going to have a glorious night tonight in the Holy Ghost. It's Holy Ghost night, but um, God is so good. God is faithful. Uh, I'm going to read a little bit of uh, 1 Chronicles 16, verse 34. It says, Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His faithfulness, love, endures forever. Hallelujah. Isn't it God good? Um, Psalm 101. Let's go there, actually. I'm just going to read a little bit. But just to get us started, how wonderful, how faithful God is, amen? And He is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. And God is looking for our worship, to worship Him and the Spirit who went through the man. And we want Him tonight. We desire Him tonight. Glory. A hundred and... Shout with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pastures. Glory. This is the verse I want to get. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give thanks to God and praise His holy name forever. Isn't He? Worthy to be praised. Has the God be good to you? He's been good. He's been good because He has given you breath today to praise His holy name. Hallelujah. Did Heavenly Father just lift up your hand? Did Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father God. And we invite you here tonight, Father God. We remember your presence here tonight, Father God. And we just want to do well, do well in the secret place with you, Father God. Father God, take a look inside our hearts and remove it.
things are possible. Amen. All you ask us to do is to believe. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We believe tonight. We'll receive tonight. We're releasing our faith tonight. We're thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Father God, your grace is amazing. Thank you, Lord. You're just so good tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the signs and the wonders that will be done in this house tonight and the lives of the people that are even gathered here. Lord, we thank you. Eyes will be open tonight. Ears will begin to hear things they haven't heard before. The things you've always wanted to say to people. But their ears have not been able to receive it. But tonight's a different night. We thank you, Lord. <coughs> Holy Spirit, we thank you, Lord. It's, it, this is Holy Ghost night. Hallelujah. And we're so grateful tonight for you, Holy Spirit. Yes. We endeavor to yield ourselves as a congregation to you. We're reminded in Acts chapter 2, verse 1, they were all in one accord in one place. And Lord, we are endeavoring to be in one accord tonight. And in one place. We're in one place. But we also want to be in that one place in you, Lord. We want you. We want you. We want you to be you in this place. Holy Spirit, we want you to do what you do best. We want that. We desire that. Lord, we're here to honor you and to glorify you and to magnify you and to exalt you and to exalt your word, Lord. We're just so grateful and so thankful tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, why don't we take up our Sunday night offering? We will be taking up a second offering a little bit later on for Brother Begley. And uh, it says in uh, Proverbs 3, uh, verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with your substance. We were, uh, Brother Dale was talking about honor this morning, honoring God, honoring our mom and dads, honoring the fine old ministry, honoring. There's something about honor and God. He says, that, and he showed us the scripture uh, this morning, it says, uh, if you will honor me, I will honor you. This is a way that we honor God is through our tithes and with our offerings. You say, well, I, I need that. I could really use that money that I've given to the Lord. Well, uh, he said, given it shall be given. And say, now we give, and God, we have our way of giving, which is through tithes and offering. God has His way of giving back. Yes. Press down, shake it together, We're running over. and running over. Now that's how God does it. Amen? I'm not going to argue with God. I'm going to cooperate with the Lord. Amen? Are you? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Yes. Let's say something good to heaven, the Father. I'm honoring you tonight. With my offerings, with my tithes, I'm giving it to you. And I thank you, Lord. You will give back to me. Press down, shaking together, and running over. You'll bring it back to me through the hands of man. And then I can give again. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.
hither and thither. Thank you, Lord. He's been faithful. He's been faithful. And Lord, you've promoted him and promoted him and promoted him, and you're still not done promoting him. We thank you, Lord, you got more for Brother Dale. You've got more in the realm of the Spirit and wisdom and knowledge and revelations. You've got more anointing for him. So Lord, we are in a place expecting tonight. We have come expecting the office of the prophet to be in manifestation. And all that goes with it, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shita Barusa Tarabanda. Let's pray in the spirit. Shita Barusa Tarabanda Nalamata. Zibatoria Shandanananama Sakatarabatarata. Zibatariu Shutorabo Shukundanamita. Zita Barrio Shutorabari Dana Vita Vita Kisakatarata. Janamasa Kutupura Kutukusha Kutati Vita Ramatarata. Zita Barrio Shutorabo Robotu Sukutara Ramatarata. Hallelujah. Thank you. Well, you know. Jesus, when he was talking to Mary and Martha when Lazarus had died, yes. he didn't tell them, if, if you hope, you'll see the glory of God. He says, if you'll believe. Right. Mm. Yeah. If you'll believe. We have a lot of, lot of, lot of Christian Pentecostals and Charismatics. And, and we do a lot of hoping. Yeah. We need to do more believing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Say, I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. That the glory of God. The glory of God. The manifested presence of the Lord. The is here in this place. To touch my neighbor. And to touch me. I'm believing. With all of my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready? <laughs> we need to loose, loose you and let you go. Praise God. Praise yeah. God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ma shi ni poto. Veri fa fa sana ni ki peke che te pa tanala. Step out. Step out. Step out of doubt. God will turn things about. Take your stand. You walk in the fullness of God's holy plan. Yes, for you're already in the promised land. Right. The promised land is the new birth, you know. Yeah. I'll bless you tonight, body, spirit, and soul. Yeah. Promised land. Promised land. You're already there. You've been born again. The promised land. Now take your stand and be a God man. Let the presence of God flow through thee to be a blessing to humanity. Yea, yea. The word divine, divine, divine flow, divine flow. <laughs> You'll be a blessing every place you go. Divine, divine, divine love that flows from above. Divine faith that doesn't hesitate. Divine joy. Oh, what can I say? Cause you to dance and shout and flutter about. Divine. 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 Cause you're born of the God kind. You should walk <laughs> in the arena of the sublime. For you've been born of the God kind. Divine flow. You'll see different flowings, different flowings that come from above, that flutters down like a heavenly dove. Through your spirit it shall flow, and how the old belly it shall go. And water the deserts, the flowers shall bloom, the blessing, there won't even be any room. An overflow, that's what I desire for you to live. In the overflow, abundant supply, 
abundant supply. Your cup shall run over, run over. You shall live in the field of Lily Lavolte. Of Lily Lavolte. Lilies and clover. For it shall overflow, and you shall be a blessing every place you go. Well, isn't God good? All the time. Thank you, Lord. Well, I want to see what God has to say. We talked this morning to you folks who weren't here on the law of honor. Whatever you honor, you sow into, you get to participate. <coughs> he took the words out of my mouth. I, <coughs> you show respect with words, but you show honor with substance. And so tonight we're going to divvy into some laws that govern different things. The law of honor governs the law of prosperity. The law of honor governs the law of longevity. How long you live determines the degree of honor you show on your life. Connect the dots. Many people do not walk in prosperity because their honor level is low. They don't walk in longevity. Their life is cut short because there's too much dishonor in their life. Oftentimes they don't even know it. Oftentimes they don't even know it. If you hear the word over and over and over and don't apply it to your life, that's dishonorable. It's really dishonorable for the Holy Ghost to have to tell you 150 times to do something. We should be quick to obey, quick to repent, quick to give, quick to love, quick to believe. So we say amen. amen. So I'm going to preach on something that you know a whole lot about called the fight of faith. One amen. Pray amen. Lord. amen. <laughs> Fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. Well, let's start off with what kind of fight is it? The good fight is the fact that it's already won. If you have uh, uh, the amplified version, the Amplified Classic Version. I want you to put on the screen, if you would please, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. Amplified Classic Version, Hebrews 4 and 2. Everybody say, I love Brother Dale. I love, I love you, Brother Dale. Dale. Well, I've been coming for 15 years. I believe you can put a little more oof into that. I love you, Brother Dale. I love Brother Dale. Or indeed. We have had glad tidings, gospel of God proclaimed to us, just as truly as the Israelites of old did when the message of deliverance from bondage came to them. But the message they heard did not benefit them because it was not mixed with faith. First question What is your faith picture? Your faith picture is your tongue. Your faith picture is your tongue. Your faith picture is your tongue. I can stop 90% of the sin in your life with duct tape over your mouth. <laughs> True enough. He said, he said in Proverbs, there's no lack of sin when there's a multitude of words. In a multitude of words, there's no lack of sin. The biggest sins of Christians is their mouth. When you don't value what your words are, it shows immaturity. Many people don't think their words matter. God told Samuel, not one word will fall to the ground. If you want the mountain to move, then your words ought to move you. So the good fight of faith is a word fight. It's a thought fact. Words are spiritual. John 63, my words are spirit. We're going to talk about people, you're going to learn so much tonight. So much. He said, uh, they heard the message, then profit them, not being mission of faith, with the leaning of the entire personality of God in absolute trust and confidence in his power. Wisdom. Do you have the Amplified Classic? Amplified Classic? The Amplified Classic uh, reads a little bit different. Uh, may I take time to read it out of the Amplified Classic? Yes. Three people, pray the Lord. Absolutely. Three people on my side. Half <laughs> my classic says, I 
absolute confidence, the power, whose goodness those who heard it, neither were they united in faith with one. Verse 3. We, we who have believed, adhere to, and trust in, and rely on God, do enter into that rest, in accordance with his declaration that those who did not believe should not enter. When he said, as I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. And this he said, although, watch it, although his works had been completely prepared and waiting for those who would believe from the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. He prepared everything you'd ever need. Mm -hmm. It's just waiting on your faith to catch up. Yes. So do you have dollar faith, two dollar faith, ten dollar faith, hundred dollar faith, thousand dollar faith, million dollar faith, treat, where's your faith located? Tonight, we're going to elevate your faith. Faith, we're going to find out what the law of faith is. The law of faith, the law of faith. The law of faith is a circuit. We know how faith comes. Romans 10, 17. The Lord recently told me, he said, I want you to double up on the word of faith message because the devil's trying to squash it. Yes. Yes, he is. The word of faith message is not popular in the No. Why? Because the devil hates it. It's been watered down. But truth doesn't change. I said truth doesn't change. That's right. Jesus came, the law, Moses brought the law, but Jesus brought truth and grace. Faith accesses grace. Without faith, there's no entree to faith, to grace. And so faith, you know, like the Bible said, it's impossible to please God. It's not hard. It's impossible. Why does God seemingly want to just wring all the faith out of you? That's, that, that's human perspective. God don't want to wring all the faith out of you. Faith is how you receive. It pleases Him for you to receive. So we're receivers, we're partakers, and we're hand holders. We lay hold. Now in Canada, y'all say hold. No, how we say hold? We shall cut out more. So He's waiting on us for our faith to catch up. Every need you'd ever have, shall have, or will have is already met and complete and prepared in the spirit realm. Your biggest enemy is not the devil. You've heard me say it a hundred times. You'll never find the devil in a shoe store. He's been defeated. <laughs> he never goes to a shoe store. He ain't got no feet. Been defeated. So God is waiting on our faith to catch up. That's the good fight. The good fight of faith. So we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. It doesn't come by having heard. One of the biggest tragedies of the charismatic move is people trying to believe God with their memory. Just because you know it and quote it and write it backwards don't mean it's in your heart. Bingo. Huh? You can't believe God with your memory. I'll go back to that. The circuit or the law of faith, Romans 3, 7, 27. The law of faith. Galatians said, don't try, I'm just going to quote it. In Galatians, he said, oh, foolish Galatians, you started off in the spirit. Now do you wind up trying to do it in your own self-human effort? Yeah. Human effort is our biggest enemy. Yes. Trying to get it done through our own ability. Old Testament was their performance. New Testament is faith in his performance. Right. You can't even trust on your performance. It becomes self-righteousness. Right. Faith by itself becomes you, 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 you. Grace by itself becomes him, 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 him. But blend the two is the perfect co covenant. So we say amen. Amen. And so we're talking about fighting the good fight of faith here in Timothy. Now let's go ahead and quote it. He goes down on Twitter and tells you how to do it. He said, Jesus came before Pilate with a good confession. I'm going to say a good confession. Good good confession. confession. The way you fight, the good kind of faith, is with your words. Jesus is standing before Pilate. It's very serious. Pilate said, I could have you killed. He said, you couldn't do anything. It's my father allowed it. In a crisis situation, your words become very, very valuable. Yes, man. I have with my preachers. 
to the hospital to pray for people. And they'll go in there and they'll say, oh, you look so bad. Well, you lost all your color. I believe your hair is falling out. You better get that preacher out of there before he, that, they kill him off. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. In a tough situation, Jesus could not stand up and defend himself. If he had to, he'd been delivered. A good confession stands there in dire straits and says what God says about it. So the good fight of faith is keeping you out of your emotions. That's it. Keeping you out of your senses. We're going to say a lot of things. You believe God with your heart, Romans 10, but you don't receive with your heart. You believe God with your heart, but you receive with your mouth. A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth. So you receive with your mouth. All God's trying to do is get you to agree with him. He's trying to get his words in your mouth. To help Abraham to get this child, he had to get into his mouth and put H into Abraham. H says for Elohim. So God had to get in his mouth to get his plan going. Down through time, God's trying to get John the Baptist in the earth. He had to shut Zechariah's mouth. Right. Your mouth is either helping him or hurting him. We need to learn to cooperate with him. Moses saw the promised land. He was not allowed to go in the promised land because he didn't talk right. He kept trying to beat the rock instead of speak to the rock. We face people. This is the faith camp. We say this boldly. We don't need to pull him back down here. We don't need to dig him up. The miracle is not the, it's right there in your mouth. That needs to be replanted and re-spoken over and over because people have drifted away from the value of your own words. God said and God said and God said until he saw. Faith will turn to sight. Yes. The manifestation of it is none of your business. When you believe in God, well, we should have done had that building. We should have done had that car. Should have done had the manifestation. That's none of your business. Keep your cotton picking nose out of God's business. Yes, sir. <laughs> Throw away your clock. Hallelujah. Throw away your calendar. Don't put him on a time slot. It's a lot better preaching than you are saying amen. Amen. <laughs> so Jesus confessed a good confession before Pilate. So when you're going through something, you better make sure your words cooperate with God. Mm. So here we have the devil on one side. James chapter 3 says the devil is just waiting to get the killing wood off of your tongue to rear up and burn you and start the course of nature against you. So the devil's waiting for your words. <laughs> the Hebrews 3 says that Jesus is our high priest of our words, our confession. Yeah. He's waiting for your words. Yeah. He said, whatever you do, don't turn loose, hold fast to your confession. Yes. Yeah. Most people, when they trouble <coughs> arises, and trust me, the just shall live by faith. But you're going to have some midnights. You're going to get a call. Someone either died, someone had a car wreck, there's a problem will come up. I've noticed over the years that actually church is a training ground yeah. for real life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You ought to be learning in here, using your faith on a regular basis, and don't get mad at me because I done got a, I done got a round trip ticket. <laughs> <laughs> the least way, the least way you use your faith is in money. Mm. If you can't trust, he can't trust the money, how can he trust you with the true riches which is the anointing? That's That's the least way to use your faith. So we go to church Sunday after Sunday, we get to your life after revival, conference after conference, tape after tape, building our faith, and when trouble hits, what what are we going to do? We're going to trust God. We've been learning all these years what to do. 
So out there somewhere, you'll come under attack. It's going to prove out if you've been listening yeah. and applying on smaller scale. Because out there somewhere, the just shall live by faith. Amen. You're going to have to use your faith. Amen. And don't get caught in the middle of the storm. Build your house when the storm's not there. And when the storm comes, it cannot shake it and cannot move it. But so many Christians fall apart when the devil does something. Did you see what the devil did? I'm going to give you a great word. Learn to live inward, not outward. The Old Testament was all about the outside. The New Testament is all about the inside, the hidden man. Why does the Bible call him hidden? Because with your senses, you can't find him. You can't find your spirit with your senses. Don't even try. You can't find your senses with your, your spirit with your senses. I'm going to say a lot of things. There's no faith in the mental realm. So Satan tries to pull you over into the emotional realm, the mental realm. If he can, he'll beat your brains out. Yeah. Stay over in the spirit realm. Paul said in Romans chapter 1, he said, uh, he said we worship God, serve God in the spirit. Romans 7 says, we delight in the law of God, but we serve him with our spirits. In Galatians, he said, we have the circumcision, worship God in the spirit. John 3 said, we worship God in spirit and truth. People are trying to serve God in the wrong realm. They're trying to serve him with their emotion. May I ask you a question? The law of gravity <laughs> is superseded by the law of lift. That's how I got here. I flew Air Canada. <laughs> <laughs> the law of gravity. I saw the wheels go up. I know the lift it off the ground. Yes. Would the plane fly faster if I was flying to a funeral? Well, I'm all emotional. <laughs> so emotions don't change the laws? No. See, they're called laws because they're truth regardless how you feel right. at the moment. Yeah. A lady said, a rush of dark heart and empty head. <laughs> I said, the Lord led me through nine divorces to teach me. I said, sister, sit down. You're not that important that God would mess up nine guys' lives <laughs> just to correct your money slam. <laughs> People have tried to fight the devil in the emotional realm. Yeah. It don't work. Crying. I'm, I'm not against crying. God is not moved by need. That's right. He's not moved by emotions. Amen. But God, I need this. I need it so bad. I just need it. I just need it. I just need it. Hmm. He said, if you don't use what you have, I'll take that and give the guy that's got ten. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't seem fair. But if you don't use it, thou shalt lose it. That's right. Yeah. Faith is like a spiritual muscle. Now listen to me. We're going to show you the, the conduit of faith. It enters the ear. As information. It registers on the heart as revelation. It comes back out the mouth with determination. That's the circuit of the law of faith. It's a whole lot like electricity. Electricity has to complete a circuit. If you don't complete a circuit, then it won't, it won't do the job it's called to do. See, God's power is the most powerful power on the planet. So it has to be regulated. So it comes in the ear, races on the heart, and comes out the mouth. That's the law of faith. It completes a circuit. Oftentimes, people let down in the speaking part. And over a period of time, they just now, they just remember what the Word says. Now, I, I think y'all do, y'all celebrate Thanksgiving? Yep. Do y'all eat turkey? Yes. Well, honey, you are what you eat. <laughs> he just called me a turkey. I did. You a turkey. Chicken. <laughs> a chicken egg and turkey. 
You can't draw any strength today on what you ate last year. Amen. Yeah. So your spirit, I'm going to say a lot of things that you, you probably don't realize. Your human spirit, your human spirit is designed by God to produce. God needed Mary's body to produce a body. He needs your spirit to produce spirit. So your spirit is designed to produce. It actually eats and digests and sucks the power out of the Word of God. It lives on it. That's what it's called your daily bread. It's called manna. If you try to live on yesterday manna, it gets wormy. I met some wormy people. Not in this area. Way up north. <laughs> <laughs> because it's no longer in their spirit, it's in their memory. When you got born again, your flesh did not get saved. That's right. Your flesh will not be saved while you're on this earth. When the rapture takes place and the trump sounds, your flesh will change in the moment of the taking of an eye. But until then, your spirit should rise up, spank your flesh, and make your flesh mine. If you don't do it, it will not get done. Amen. I would love to do it for other people. <laughs> but that's not my assignment. That's your job. People try it all the time. I know what's wrong with our, our church is Sister Bucket Mouth. <laughs> just, just get rid of her. And I'll just pray that she finds her again. <laughs> love you, brother. Love you. The law of faith gov governs the power of God. Everybody wants more power, more power, more power, more power. If God shot the power up in you, you your tongue was splitting too. A lot of words you're saying. People don't realize what they say. How you doing? Not too good. Lose my teeth, my hair, my job, my mind, my memory. What was he talking about? How are you doing? Oh, I don't have an Alzheimer. Got that sometimes, you know. <laughs> the other day, I met one of my old school children. How are you doing? He said, I'm just going insane. Just going insane. I said, well, don't stand close to me. <laughs> I saw one of my old girlfriends at the grocery store. I thought, ooh. Boy, did I dodge a bullet. <laughs> Sean, died, Sean died in Rhonda. She didn't look like her mama. She looked like her, her, her mama's mama. I said, now, Charity, did we date in high school? She said, yes, we did. I said, see what you missed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. If you're not enjoying this, you're not doing it right. <laughs> So the circuit of faith, the law of faith governs. So the law of love, the royal law, the highest law, is so important. What does it do? When you step out of love, you step out of faith. Because faith works by love. Oh, you still quote scripture. You still quote it. You can write it down. At least not in here. I, I, I hate to tell you this, but if you go to a hospital, they'll tell you, if you don't eat and go to the bathroom, you'll die. It has to complete the circuit. Huh? Yeah. I said, huh? Yeah. If you eat no more gas here, you'll blow up. Yeah. <laughs> it has to complete the circuit. And so it can only come through you as he can trust you, it'll come out of you. So the circuit is your ears. <laughs> you know, I, I got to just off the bus. <laughs> All right, let's go to Mark 11 22. I was saving this for later. <laughs> Jesus walked by a fig tree. And he spoke to a tree. <laughs> you know, you speak to things all the time. I don't know it. I went to the grocery store late one night and uh, I took a can of Campbell's soup and set it on the counter. And uh, the cashier knocked it off on the floor. And she said, Get up here and sit up here where you roll. I said, You talking to me? <laughs> I said, to the hotel in Tulsa doing a revival. And I'm checking in. And she said, What are you here for? I said, I'm here to preach revival. I said, are, are you a Christian? She said, well, I'm a fish to pay you. Does that mean anything? I said, does it mean anything? She said, just sign the book. <laughs> See, we're not careful. We're snared. The whole chapter James, chapter 3, 
does not say pray about it. It says your tongue will turn the ship and turn the horse and turn the trouble. Amen. See, we're bothering God, trying to get him to do something. He's actually already done before the foundation of the world. He gave us authority. Now, I'm going to leave you a quick synopsis real quick. Before Jesus came to the earth, no human had divine love. No human had divine faith. Well, what about Abraham? I'm glad you brought him up. <laughs> he believed God because God Almighty came down and talked to him. His hair wouldn't lay down for a month. Uh -huh. Jesus said to Thomas, he said, you believe, you what? You believe, you what? You believe because you see and you feel. Human faith has to have sensory perception. God's faith only needs his word. Yes. Nothing else. You don't need to feel it, see it, taste it. Matter of fact, if you're looking to see it and taste it and smell it, Satan's trying to pull you back over in the emotional realm. Mm -hmm. Your emotions are not born again. They are seated in your soul. <coughs> so there's no divine love. Galatians says faith, divine faith, was shut up. Faith was shut up until the seed could come to whom the promise was made. So in actuality, the promise wasn't made to you. I'm going to shout some of y'all. Some of y'all can use some shot therapy. God's covenant cannot be broken. Cannot be broken. Cannot be broken. Hallelujah. Because all that is between God the Father and God the Son. Amen. You got in on it because you married the Son. Bingo. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You get all the benefits. See when he crowned us with glory? You know how he did that? He made us one with Jesus. That's the glory. He crowned us with Jesus. We become one. That ought to make a bad news shout. <laughs> and so when Jesus spoke to the fig tree, Divine faith went to work. There was no divine joy, no divine love, no divine faith until Jesus got here. No human had it until they got born again. And when then God inserted into their spirit man his nature. Now we're divine partakers of his nature. So we ought to have a step up above ordinary non-believers. But most Christians, bless their daughter's heart and empty heads, not in this area, way up. Do everything with human power, human effort, human finances. Well, we sold peanut brittle, bought us some pews. Everybody got rotten teeth, but bless God, we got some pews. Human. See, listen, this is, I'm saying, if a sinner can do it, it's not God. Yeah. The Boy Scouts can sell cookies. Yeah. The Girl Scouts can sell cookies. Yeah. It takes faith to cast your bread on the water and believe him for a harvest. And cast it again and back and forth and double it, 30 fold, 6 fold, 100 fold. Yes. Yeah. We should not be even concerned. See, we, we live so far beneath our privileges. Your work just should be the seed, not what you're living on. <laughs> work we have, you may have to give. To those in need, Amen. we're trying to live on the seed. This is the harvest off the seed. I wish y'all got out one more. So he said to the fig tree, his words went to work in a realm you can't see. <clears throat> he went to the root of the problem. Come back on the morning, they saw that the, the, the fig tree began to swivel up. He said, I will teach y'all how faith is going to be used. He said, have the God kind of faith and say to the mountain. No, 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 no. Don't y'all try it at home. It's like I'm going to blow your lips off. <laughs> no, he said, whosoever. She mm -hmm. to the mountain. The world we're, our Christians are famous for telling everybody how big the mountain is. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't know what I'm going through. My mother-in-law, 
bought a one-way ticket to my house and brought her twin sister. <laughs> Total old flush. I'm sure I ate a hairball for breakfast. <laughs> Brush my teeth with testing in this fresh age. <laughs> Life does have its soul. Huh? But you can have peace in the middle of the storm. Yes. Peace flows out of your spirit regardless of what's around you. Amen. So when something comes up, listen, turn inward. Turn inward. Learn to live inside. Something out here, you say, that's just outside. That's just outside. That's just outside. That's just temporary. In here is eternal. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Are you hungry? Well, let me pray about it, and I'll get back to you. No, you say, no. Are you cold? Let me fast 21 days, and I'll get back and tell you if I'm cold. <laughs> you know, instantly, you're in contact with your flesh. You ought to train yourself to instantly be in contact with your spirit. Yes. By God's design, in Proverbs says, the spirit of man will sustain him during trouble. So, do you understand that your spirit gives life to your flesh? Mm -hmm. yes. If that spirit leaves your body, you'll just fall down. That's right. The flesh has no life of its own. That's right. Without the spirit, you're dead. Right. You'll just fall down. So, whether you know it or not, life is pulsating. From your spirit man now, yeah. even a sinner has life. Mm -hmm. Not the Zoe, God got him, but he has life. Mm -hmm. Human spirit keeps the flesh alive. Mm -hmm. But you beat on it, you shoot it, you hit it hard, that spirit will leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But while it's here, we should learn to learn to feed it. What 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 builds it up? Faith does. Faith does. And so the Bible calls daily bread. And so Paul wrote in Corinthians, he said, your outward man perishes. Have you noticed everybody getting older but us? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that things turn color, fall off, turn loose, move around? <laughs> <laughs> but the inner man, watch it, is renewed. Yeah. Renewed. Yes. Day by day. Mm -hmm. Every day. Is a new beginning. Mm -hmm. You can't live on what you learned yesterday. Now, I'm not a movie buff, but years ago, it was, this was a clean movie. I mean, it had some stuff in I think, before, but if we don't haul market, it's a clean movie. Called 50 First Dates. Yeah. And this one kid, uh, she had a car wreck or something, and she couldn't remember. And when she'd go to sleep, she couldn't remember nothing. And so she got married to this guy, and every morning she had to get up. And learned that she got married, had two kids by him. She had to watch a video every day because her memory would only last one day at a time. Wow. Every day she had to renew. Every day. See, you have to renew every day. You can't go two or three weeks because what happens? Your revelation digresses back to information. Yes. Yes. It's in the wrong realm. Oh, you know scripture. I know what that Bible says. I know that Bible from Genesis to Revolution. I bet you do. I bet you do. The devil believed and trembled. Stay with me. And so, in Mark 11, 20, he says, Be thou removed, be thou cast to see, shall not doubt his heart, but believe those things you said. When you start believing what you say will come to pass, you watch what you say. You quit saying, My hair is falling out. You can say that. I'm growing new hair. <laughs> Hallelujah. I have a PhD. Pretty hair, dude. <laughs> I talk to it. Don't, 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 don't. Oh, man. <laughs> you got to love this. He said, you shall have. I'll give you a gold nugget. Believing you receive is an act of your spirit. Faith is a choice. Yes. Love is a choice. It's not a feeling. In the sensual, emotional realm, you have the same attributes. Sinners have love, but it's human love. Don't digress from the supernatural love to the natural love. <clears throat> Sinners have joy. When their hockey team does something, that little fuck thingy, 
<laughs> they hit it somewhere or something. They get all happy. That's natural. <coughs> Our joy comes from the Lord. Amen. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Regardless of anything else, you cannot take my joy. You can't take my strength because it has nothing to do with the outside. It has to do with the inside. So what is the kingdom of God? It is peace, rush, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So as long as you've got the Holy Ghost, you ought to be happy, jumping, running, shouting. Yes. A sign of being full of the Holy Ghost is staggering. <laughs> it is. <laughs> now, if you're really full, you're going to uh, talk funny, walk funny, and sing funny, and oh my God, and oh my God. <laughs> you're sitting drunk. They don't act normal. We are not normal people. Amen. Peculiar. I asked Lord, I said, he said, I said, Lord, can, can I just be normal? He said, I don't need normal. We need abnormal. Supernatural. And so all of our attributes in the spirit, Christians have them. There's, 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 there's some good sinners. That they, won't, they won't sit on the sidewalk. They, they don't kick the cat. They always vote Republican. <laughs> but they're sinners. So they have a joy. They have a love. They have emotion. They have all these attributes. But ours now are a higher level over in the spirit realm. Yeah. But you as a believer have to learn which one am I following here? Am I trying to work for God in the human love? Because he'll always bring a failure. Well, I went to church over there. They wouldn't let me sing. We heard you. You can't sing. <laughs> they did you a favor. Can't you from embarrassing yourself. <laughs> Come on, somebody. And so, but if you attempt that, griping and complaining is the language of the devil. Amen. He'll yes. pull you out of honor over into dishonor. And you say... And you'll think you're right. Mm -hmm. See, Paul, as Saul, worked just as hard for the devil because he thought he was right. Mm -hmm. We're going to squash this Nazarene rebellion. We're going to squash these people that said that Jesus is a son. We're going to squash them. Mm -hmm. But he had a Jesus, he had a come to Jesus beating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he went from the natural realm over to the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you a question. If Jesus is standing right there, right there, right there, Paul is blind. He can't see. Why did Jesus heal him? Why did he send him to, to uh, 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 Elias' house? Why did Jesus do it? Because Jesus already transferred the authority back to the church. Uh -huh. yeah. God has to use a man. Ooh, that's good. God has to use a man. So here we have all this authority, binding and loosening, cast down the devil. But if you step right over here, out of love... Now you're on the devil's territory and you lose all your authority. Oh, yeah. I have a neighbor. I used this example before. His name is Brown. He's Brother Brown. He's a good neighbor. Over here on this side, my property. I can dig a well. I can dig a cellar. I can dig a septic tank. I can dig my wife's grave. <laughs> I didn't say I'd put her in it. Oh. In case, you know, something. As soon as I step over on him, the other side, I no longer have authority. Amen. Yes. When you step out of love, you lose your authority. Your faith quits working. But the good news is you can repent, pick it right back up, and start right where you left off. Yes. You don't go back to the back of the class. You go right back where you stopped. Amen. 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 This is a lot better preaching than yours, ain't it, man? Amen. Amen. And so what is, what is Satan's job? To pull you over in the emotional realm. Yes. So the good fight of faith is you keeping you over in the spirit, not your emotions, not your senses. Well, I just think we ought to do this. There you go, think it all by yourself. <laughs> your biggest enemy is your unrenewed mind. Yes. <coughs> That's for sure. That's true. Yeah. So it's glad it's from gospel church. <laughs> Somebody hit up in tongues for me. <laughs> Listen to the carefully. The shall have, don't put a time limit on it. God said, if you believe, 
and say, you shall have. Believing you receive is your part. The manifestation is his part. That's right. Don't go sticking in the hole in his part. Manifestation means perception to the senses. Over here, you can't perceive with your senses. We live, most Christians live 85 to 95% of the time in their senses. Now, if you drive me to the airport, I don't want you in the spirit. I want you in the flesh. Yeah. I want you to go, no, I want you. So all sin is carnal, but not all carnality is sin. So you have to keep yourself from sliding over in the emotional realm. There's whole groups of people that their whole worship is emotional. The first time the word worship was mentioned was that Abraham said, we go, me and my son, to worship. They didn't have a piano, didn't have a guitar, nor a tambourine. What did he do? He put what he cherished in the flesh on the altar. That's called worship. That's called worship. So here we are, born again. God circumcised our spirit. Recreated it, brand new, in his sight, pure, holy, and righteous. Now your flesh, well, it needs work. Yes. But he knew who your heart. Right. He was at your heart. Yes. If he had to wait for you to get perfect in your flesh, he couldn't use anybody. Amen. Right. So your flesh has to be changed. So you're the custodian. Yes. So the law of life in Christ Jesus, what does it do? The law of life. It transforms you from a sinner, takes out that old human spirit, and puts in a brand new one, and now you have the nature of God. Mm. That's the law of life. Yes. I'm reminded of a story about Alexander Dowie. He was a, uh, a preacher in Australia during the Blue Bonnet Plague years ago. And uh, people were dying by fires, and he was burying them, and he was a pastor. And he didn't know where's God, where's the devil. You know, somewhere people got all mixed up. This is real simple. God is good. The devil is bad. John 10, 10. It's easy. And so he were dying. He, he didn't know what God led him to this verse, Romans chapter 8 and 2. He said, the law of life has made me free. The law said that. He took that one revelation, one, become a great renowned faith healer. Came to the States, moved to Chicago. They had so many healings in his ministry that they would have to keep rags on the altar because tumors would fall off and blood would squirt everywhere. Oh, they kept God. blood rags on the altar. Thousands and thousands. Smith Wigglesford, F.F. Bosworth, John G. Lake were all affected by his ministry. And guess what? He wasn't even baptized in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Didn't even speak in tongues. Yeah. Oh, wow. The new birth. You get the Holy Ghost in the new birth. Mm -hmm. yep. The tongues is the expression or expansion. Are you listening? That's it. it. That's but it. one revelation, just one, changes the entire life. See, it's not that you just believe it. It's how you hear. Yeah. The degree you hear it is how you're going to have it. It's the measure. I preached on honor. This one sermon, this one, it could change your entire life. No, oh, yeah. If you heard it with every fiber of your being. Amen. All right, to be casual. Well, yeah, I've heard that before. I just, you know, don't I. No, it's how you hear it. The degree you hear it is how you apply it to your life. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody smile. I'm sure you're probably here for a whole. Just go ahead and smile. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get on with the inward man because the Lord has been talking real strong lately about inward. inward. He said, You've got to, uh, well, look for it on the screen. It's 2 Corinthians, uh, 2 Corinthians, the uh, uh, fourth chapter, verse 16. The inward man. And what's the inward man? The inward man. He said, the inward man is renewed day by day. There's several scriptures I can come up with. Lamentation. Uh, his mercies are new every day. Uh, your daily bread, your daily cross, your daily. What is our cross to bear? Our cross to bear is you have a spirit. That is glorified, but a body that's not. 
James Hayes is at war with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your body, your flesh, is no different from the sinner. No different. The only thing changes in the world is your spirit. So you're a custodian. You're the custodian over your flesh. And you're to spank it, make it mine, and keep your mind renewed. If you don't do it, it will master and be lost. You'll never be victorious in the things of God with your unrenewed mind and your body being lost. That's right. A couple woke up real early and said, said, are you going to church? I don't know where you're going. I guess we ought to. We're the pastors. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you're a preacher don't mean your flesh is automatically wonderful. Well, you're a preacher and you breathe. Your breath don't smell and neither does your feet. <laughs> I don't get up right there, y'all. So God has to work. God has to work with your cooperation. The least you cooperate, the least He can work with you. He said, He said here, the evil man is renewed day by day. How do you tell your outer man has changed since you were sixteen? Yeah. Oh yeah. The inner man is renewed, so it can't live on last year's feeding. We just to Matthew 12. I'm just going to quote this. Matthew 12, he said, there's two different kinds of trees. He said, he said, if you, he said, where do you say, I'm paraphrasing, he said, from an evil man's heart, evil things come to pass. He said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So you can tell what's in a person by their language. I can listen to you five minutes and tell you what you're full of. You're full of something. Everybody here full of something. Yep. I've got people full of Tupperware. <laughs> oh, we have plastic bowls. <laughs> okay. You determine what you're full of. Whatever you focus on is what you'll gravitate to. Whatever you focus on, if you focus on the outside, you'll be filled with outside problems. If you focus on the inside, you'll be filled with all the answers. Isn't it simple? Amen. God didn't make it hard. No. We you make it hard. Choose wrong things and then ask God to change it. He ain't gonna change for anybody. Laws don't have to change because they're always right. Truth don't have to change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody say amen. 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 So so honor is connected to longevity and the prosperity. Law of faith governs the power. Uh, uh, here it is. I don't even finish quoting Matthew. He said, uh, what is the heart of the mouth speaking? He said, the good treasures of a good man's heart. <sighs> We're living in this time that news is almost instantaneous. In October last year, some horrible things happened. Yeah. Incordial, unthinkable things right. from an enemy mm -hmm. taking women and cutting their bellies open, taking the babies out put them in ovens. Just horrible, horrible. Where did that come from? It came out of evil men's hearts. Right. Evil men's hearts produce that. Hate will produce that. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So on the counterpart, he said, from the treasure of a good man, good man's heart, good things done the fact. So let me give you a quotation. This is Matthew 21 verse 2. God is a spirit. All things spiritual flows through your spirit. If you get a healing on your knee, the healing power flows from his spirit into your spirit, into your body. <coughs> That's the channel. It's the spirit realm. Your body's in a different realm. Finances is in a different realm. But the, the, the flow of it has to come to his spirit, to your spirit, and the bridge that connects it is the faith of God. So we don't get rich. Remember me when you come to your kingdom. <laughs> then he finished on this in Matthew 12 he said by your words you're justified by your words you're condemned he didn't say the devil's word he said yours most people shoot themselves in the foot because they think it takes too long anytime you believe you receive power is released you don't have to see it. You don't have to feel it. Power is released. Your part is to believe you receive. It is a spiritual act. 
It's an act of your faith. It has nothing to do with what you feel. It has to do with your decision that you believe. Now, what do you teach us three twenty not close? It'll be my first final closing. Don't get excited. We have 17 of them. <laughs> you can't just 3.20. This is so elaborate. God is able to move, do move all you can ask or think. I don't know about you, but I think pretty big. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yes, he does. Ask all, love all you ask. Well, watch it. <laughs> it has to do, uh, you get the King James Version on this one. <clears throat> It has to do with the activated power that's alive working in you. I'm not trying to be kind, unkind, or crude, or rude. I'm not trying to make you vomit. But the food you eat is on its way out. <laughs> if not, you need help, personal help. Oh, yeah. So your body right now is working, digesting that food. Your spirit does the same thing. It has to live on daily food. So if you don't know what Proverbs is, keep this word in the midst of your heart. How you do that? Keep it in your ears. Keep it in your mouth. Say it. Hear it. Say it. Hear it. And it keeps that circuit going. You can't believe God from memory. Right. And so many Christians decide to keep their faith activated by memory. There's no faith in the mental realm. Mm -hmm. It's all in the spirit realm. It has to be kept up. Brother Hagin, you say, your mind won't stay renewed more than your hair will stay combed. <laughs> and you get up every morning and put your hair in place. You don't have to go to store and buy yourself, but put it in place. <laughs> Keep the word. Joshua 1 8, one of my favorites. He said, Meditate day and night that thou may observe to do. He said, Don't ever stop letting the word come out of your mouth. Then you'll have good success. You'll see how to do and have good success. The more you speak it, the more you believe it. Now, folks, we're not trying to earn it, we're qualifying for it. We've already got this free gift. But you have to qualify. Yes. Oh, yeah. I tell people about the Holy Ghost. You know speaking, you know giddy. <laughs> the speaking fills up your heart. That's how you fill your heart up with your own mouth. So your tongue is the mixer. To mix faith with it. You start believing. So Jesus now is our high priest. And what's he doing? Watching over your words to bring them to pass. When you don't see the value of that, you're immature. You start growing, you start seeing the value of your words. You need to stay active, active. One of my favorite, Philemon 6, we'll close with this. This will be about 15th final closing. <laughs> Philemon 6, please. If you want your faith to work effectually, he should, I'm paraphrasing, constantly acknowledge what's in you in Christ. What are you doing? You're looking to the inside, not the outside. Mm. Paul said this way, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the glory of the excellence of power may be of him and not of us. We mm. cannot get this job done with human effort. We can't get it done with human finances. We can't get we got to get God involved. Amen. Amen. We can't do it with human strength. We can't sell enough cookies. Amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. It's just right. the truth. That's right. Amen. But we'll do our part. He will match his part. It's already done before the foundation of the world. Mm -hmm. Can I give you one more picture of this? Yes. God furnished everything in the Garden of Eden before he put Adam and Eve in there. That's right. He put them in there Friday just before dark. Just before the Sabbath. He made enough trees for 10 billion people. He made enough air for billions of people. They know they do. If God has a fault, it's because he overblesses. <laughs> Every need they would have was already met before he put it in there. All the air, all the food, or 
Amen. You heard me say this. In the new birth, he didn't put us back in the garden. He put the garden inside of us. That's it. Amen. Amen. Every need is already met in Christ Jesus. He's waiting for your faith to catch up to your victory. Don't get anything tonight. Give the Lord a good shout, everybody. Give the Lord a good shout. Oh, give him a good shout. Give him a good shout. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. May I ask you another question? How would you act if what you're bleeding for, you already had? Woo! <laughs> so if you really believed it, you go ahead and act it. Rejoice, I say. I know Pastor Biden well enough. If he called me on the phone and said, Brother Levy, I cut you a check for a half a million dollars that's in the mail, I wouldn't have to see it. I get off the phone. <laughs> I would revel because I believe in him. So when we act like we've already got it, before we get it, we really believe. Yeah. So joy is on the outer side of faith. Why wouldn't you believe it? God has never let anyone down. Hallelujah. If he said it, he'll do it, he'll bring it to pass. Amen. Yes. Besides that, what's your hurry? Where are you going? Yeah. You don't do it in 10 days, 20 days, 100 days. Yes. And if somehow now you fail to receive what are you believing God for, and you die, you still the winner. Yes. <laughs> Just a short cut to the house. Yes. Amen. Yes. I said amen. 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 Don't ever forget these words. Turn in. Turn in. Turn in. Turn in. Turn in. Something happened out here, turn in. Yeah. You'll always stay in the storm, you'll have peace in here. Yeah. Yeah. Paul was in prison, had peace in here. Yes. He learned to turn inward. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know you actually live inside yourself? <laughs> <laughs> you do? Yeah. Yep. When people yeah. jump from church to church, yeah. church to church, trying to find answers, the only problem is, wherever they go, there they are. <laughs> What's wrong with them? That's a good one. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Uh, someone has a short, sore shoulder. If you come here, the power of God will hit you, and your shoulder won't be sore anymore. If you have a short. When I lay hands on you, power and God's going to come in you. But first, the father wants to talk to your daughter. Pull aside, said the Lord of hosts. I'll reacquaint you with the voice of the Holy Ghost. I'll visit you in dreams. I'll dread at you in revelation. You shall see with a keen eye. You shall know and understand the fullness of my plan. It'll, let, oh, it'll seem so great and so far beyond to the mind. But you'll know the plan is of the God kind. Because you'll see it in your spirit. And you know it was true. He'll give you a flash of the future. And you'll know what to do. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the power, the power, the power. <sighs> Someone else have a shoulder that's bothering them? Thank you, Lord. That's how we charge with the hour. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. I think I have more fun coming up here than y'all do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, y'all. Oh, I already did. <laughs> uh, let me get this right. Let me get this right. Right there. Right there. Right there. Do the build up of calcium on your rotary cuff. <laughs> Before the foundation of the world, I knew you. I knew you in your mother's womb. Yes. You have been criticized and talked about, but I see your heart. Mm -hmm. And your heart is sure in my sight, mm -hmm. blessed and holy and right. Yes. And I shall see you through. Yay, yay. yay. Fresh revelation shall flow. Yes. You'll know things that you never knew that you would know. So get ready, said the Lord of Hosts. I'm going to rebaptize you in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> 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 
If you'll come here, go ahead, straighten that neck out. I hate to call you stiff neck. <laughs> I don't know what else to call you. Missouri, 
lady's deaf. She was healed. Ears open, nobody touched her. I mean, seeing one in Missouri, man was deaf, healed, nobody touched him. I can tell you, service after service, for just saying another word, just saying another word, there's times things will happen. How many believe that? Amen. So you don't want to miss an air service. Anyone else need prayer before we change the word of service? No one else need prayer. We're not going to keep you too long. We're going to gang up on you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Anyone else need prayer? Brother, what do you need the Lord to do for you? Have to be close. Well, ain't no sense in that. <laughs> you have overbalance of alkaline in your body. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command the healing power of God to flow in your body. It's flowing now. It's flowing out. The power is flowing in you. Believe you receive. Believe you receive. Sis, what, what did you need? I just want to grab you and shake you. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> Old lot of shaking going on. Now lift your hands. Down your spine. Power is flowing down your spine. Huh, you won't have any more trouble. <laughs> you tell the power's on you? Yeah. <laughs> Me and her's having church. I don't know what y'all doing. We <laughs> you one piece of heat. Did you need prayer, Sissy? What did you need? Your neck. You're afraid of me to shake your neck. I'm not going to shake you. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't my first rodeo. <laughs> Gently. <laughs> there it is. See, if someone's afraid, what? Well, I learned. See, God will meet you at the point you need. He, he bent down to where the adulterer was. He didn't condemn her. Mm -hmm. I, if I didn't know me, I'd be scared of me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would. Hallelujah. Oh, <laughs> <God. laughs> what do you do? <laughs> you want me to tell you? Well. <laughs> if I go on the power, brother might be finished the sermon. <laughs> in God's good. Amen. All the time. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You got anything, brother? Just walk down one of these aisles a little bit. Well, I get close to you. I can, I can preach all night. Y'all want to test me? <laughs> <laughs> I have to watch because I embarrassed myself. I was in Montreal uh, Airport. I just jerked. <laughs> and that way just did not want to bring me my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no, don't let me jerk no more. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I, I'm just sitting on the airport. I am here. I, I'll be honest with you. Can I be real, gut level honest? Something happened to me a few months ago, and I've been on the anointing for the last, oh, when was Kinder? Kinder, Louisiana. June. I can tell it's only. I'm going to another level. Hallelujah. He wants everybody Hallelujah. to go to. Yes. He said greater glory is coming. Yes. He said the greater glory is coming. Yes. It'll be so strong and so bright. Whole cities will be saved. Oh. Oh. See, we've been in a dry spell oh, yeah. a long time. Yeah. But it's a preparatory. See, it took 30 years for Jesus to prepare for three years of ministry. Wow. The next few years, we're going to tick nails and take names. Come on, yeah. Oh, shut up. So, I'm going to see anything. The glory is coming yeah. in a great way. Amen. That's an amen. Amen. So, something's changing in me. I went from one glory to another glory. Well, I want to go to another one. Amen. And another one. Yes. Our predecessors. I believe I will. Our predecessors. We're going to learn from the successes, mm -hmm. and we're going to learn from their faults. Mm -hmm. yes. Would you chill on something? Mm -hmm. The water that goes through the hose is not for the hose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all of our predecessors that made mistakes, they brought light that we're living in right now. Yes. Wow, yeah. Let's learn from their light and learn from their mistakes. Amen. So the Lord don't shave my, my mind. Next time we're going to preach on the anointing. That yeah. all of them are like great. Yeah. 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 I, I don't want to do it anyway. <laughs> uh, so, thank you, Father. 
Sir, the good looking man there with the glasses, will you stand please? Yeah, you, yeah, you. Upon you does rest the hand of the Lord. When you speak, it'll come out like a two edged sword. You'll say things that will trouble people. <laughs> some will get glad and some will get mad. But you carry, you carry, you carry the sonship of the Lord. So be ready, saith the Lord, at any time. Any time, step over into the other realm and speak. Well, the Holy Ghost shall speak. It will not be you. It will surprise you what you say. But you'll win people. You'll win people. You'll win people. They'll never come to church. But you'll win them, saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, Hallelujah. Uh, we'll go ahead and receive the evening offering uh, for our ministry. Everybody say, uh, uh, God is good. God is good. If you'll let me, we'll help you go to another level in your giving. This is what the Lord explained to me. The biggest part of the church world is motivated by need. Listen to me carefully. But see, need to meet a need oftentimes is seated in the soul realm. <coughs> Understand this. He says, step over. I begin to purpose in your heart. I can tell you a sad story, but I don't have any. <laughs> I don't have any sad story. All our bills are paid. We don't, we don't, we're not lacking anything. Don't owe anybody, and I've been debt free for 20 something years. Amen. There's something wrong when a preacher always has to put pressure on people to give. Something wrong with that. Always something wrong when it's always need based. To get over into the higher level of giving out of honor. You want to hear this one? We talked on that. Queen Sheba <coughs> brought 20 tons of gold to Solomon. Did he need that gold? No. Nah. He had so much wealth, they just piled silver outside, didn't have time to count it. That'd be an awesome trouble to have. Yeah. But she gave it, and wisdom flowed to her. Any problem in life that seems to be stuck, it's a lack of wisdom. Yes. So we're going to start learning how to give out of honor. Yes. Out of honor. Remember what the brother said ago? You show your respect with words, but you show your honor with substance. When I take my wife shopping, I let her look. <laughs> <laughs> No, I call it driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> Substance. Fathers, we receive the evening offering. Teach us and train us how to honor you with our substance. She called full sick king. Jesus is the high priest of the day. And we're going to put it in his hand. We're going to honor him today. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen. You make out a check, make out to the church. They'll write, let's write this one check. Uh, but honor is a whole, a whole different ballgame. <laughs> amen. Amen. I, I'd rather not even say this. I, I really would. But the Lord keeps chumping me. Keeps chumping me. About two or three months ago, the Lord came to me in a dream. He gave me the phrase, to give me about $10,000. So, I began to believe God. I went to Canada, believing God for ten thousand dollars, because I knew I was going to give it to Brother Bible in this church. And so when I went there, went to a church way out in the country, preached one night. They received an offering of fourteen thousand dollars. That's God. I got their ten thousand dollars. See, I, I lead by example. Amen. Huh? Amen. See, we ought to learn. You ought to trust someone. Yes. That leads by example. Amen. I just don't say it, I do it. Amen. Follow a doer, not just a sayer. Yeah. 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 So this is going to be an awesome week. You're going to go from glory to glory to glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for it? Yes. 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 You want to start right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you go get some rest and soak this up. Pastor, let's give our pastor a hand clap as he can. Well, I think we, uh, you posted on, on Facebook uh, when you went down under the power in that church. Is that right? Is that yes, when we saw it? Yes, sir. So 
So, you want to elaborate just a little bit more what happened? The Lord, said to, the Lord said to me, he said, teach my people to, to yield better. I thought, what, what do you mean yield better? He said, most of them, when the power comes on, he, he said, that, he said if the power is real, the power is real, then they should take advantage of what comes on them, mix it with their faith, and yield to it. Then he had to study at the Marie Wentworth Edder, the Scott the Reader book, and she had some awesome things happen when people went out of the power. They fell into trances. And then he had to go and study how Peter fell into a trance. Paul fell into a trance at least three times. And during that trance, they got revelation knowledge. In Marie Wentworth Edder's meetings, Jesus appeared to people while they were on the power. Others got revelation of it. Others had vision. Others had dream. Some of them came to church to mock her, fell out of the power, and got up saved. Praise God. God. See, folks, God has saved the best oh, for last. Amen. In her meeting, people fell out of the power. It's documented, proven that people fell out of the power as high as 50 miles away. Wow. wow. Now, think about it. Now, I walked down the hospital. <laughs> Hours. And I've had people scream at me, Ah! Del Bentley's no good! <laughs> I have. I've had demons talk to me through a woman's voice and a woman's body with a man's voice. So they never know who's, who's you are. So you carry something. But how would you like to walk into Walmart and all the checkers fall out of power? <laughs> Most of them are gone anyway. <laughs> Something happened to me. Something happened to me when I was in a meeting with Brother Hagen and he laid hands on me. Something went into me. That was 30 something years ago. I left that meeting prophesying in rhyme. In a certain time when that spirit is really on me, that flow, I have preached as high as 25 minutes in rhyme. You can't preach 25 minutes. You, you're not that sharp. What rhymes with God in the facade and trod? You're done. You're done. <laughs> I get in that flow, in that flow. So I've learned to to detect what flow is that night. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that night I went another power. I, I didn't aim to it. Down I went. Yeah. But something happened. That old song, something got a hold of me. <laughs> Woo, something changed. Mm -hmm. I went to a higher level. So it just might be that he got that for you. I don't know. I don't know. He might impart something to you while you're on the floor. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Let's take advantage of what he's attempting to do in this last hour. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, while we have uh, Pastor Michael Austin, do you want to come up? I just would like Brother Begley to minister to you. I know you came a long way from Lawrenceville, and he's already you know, already laid hands on Pastor Bill back there already, and, and almost all of his congregation there, too. Mm -hmm. This is Pastor Michael Austin. I, I, I just want to lay hands on your stomach. From your belly, from your belly, fresh revelation shall come. It shall rise up and bubble up. It will turn you into another man. And you'll speak. You'll, you'll speak for another. And you'll say words and things. You thought, well, where did that come from? Come up out of your spirit. But my spirit and your spirit are now one, says the Lord. And you shall flow with ease. Revelation shall flow with ease. In Jesus' name. There's the power. There's the power. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, you don't think the no one won't turn you to another man? I don't like men to touch me. I don't touch other men. I'm so straight, I hate curves. <laughs> then I am putting my hand on that man's belly. I just don't do stuff like that. Well, no, it, it'll turn into something else. It'll turn into something else. It'll turn into another man. That's what he said to you about it. I better quit. I'm going to preach it again. Amen. Amen. I think it's Romans. Can we put up uh, Romans? I think it's 1 8. Bagley had mentioned it, but uh, he says, I long to see you face to face, yes. that I might impart unto you a spiritual gift. Yes, That's not it right there. <laughs> one nine. One nine? Yeah. One nine. One more verse. No, that's not it either. Nope. It's in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but what it simply says, he says, you know, 
I need to see you face to face. He, he didn't say, I'm going to write a letter and you're going to get it out of the letter. He said, I need to see you face to face. That I might impart some spiritual gift yeah. to you. There's only one way some of these things can come. Yes, and that's why I encourage you very much to be in the service, be face to face with Brother Baker. Lots of things are happening tonight. Yes. Lots of things are being released. Things are being imparted. It might take you a day or two before you even find out you've received something. <laughs> Did you find that verse yet? I really want to go out there. Romans 1. There it is. One, one, Romans one, one, 11. One. For I long to see you that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you might be established. Yes. God's desire mm -hmm. is to give you something from the Holy Ghost that will help you through difficult times. Yes. How, Valerie, come on up here for just a minute. I got another one for you. I'm not going to tell you what she needs, but you'll be able to figure it out. Probably. She needs an overhaul. Sister, it's all through your body. Mm -hmm. Your blood is not producing enough corpuscle, uh, red corpuscles. Your low electric lights. Your, your, your liver's been infected. Your uh, uh, thyroid's been infected. In the name of the, you, matter of fact, you feel tired all the time. When you eat, the food does you hardly any good. You, you, you have hardly any strength. You don't sleep well at night. You can have neuropathy in your feet. You do need overhaul from top to bottom. <laughs> When you was younger, you suffered a concussion. You fell, and you've got a dark spot right there inside. It's coagulated, no blood flow. God's healing. In the last nine months, your memory's trying to leave, and you forget things. You become sharp. Clarity of mind, rightness of mind, supernatural intelligence, supernatural recall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I didn't save it up. Mr. Kim, I may have said this to you before, but I reiterate. Tongues take you to the door. The psalms and hymns will take you all the way in. Speaking of psalms and hymns, you'll sing under an awning that you've never had before. It'll be strange at first, and words will just float down from heaven up through your spirit. Some will rhyme, some will not rhyme. Yours won't be as rhythmic, but you'll sing out that words, scriptures will flow and unite together. There's much coming against you, much pressure, much pressure coming against your home life. What I'm telling you, saith the Spirit of God, all is well. All is well. Amen. The gift in you shall rise up right. and meet the challenges, and the devil will have to flee. That's right. Hallelujah. Great victory yes. is coming your way. Yes. You'll see part of it before this revival is over. Yes. Then war shall come. Yes. And you shall play like a woman from another world. You shall play in the glory cloud. You won't have to have strobe lights and smoke bakers. The cloud will come in. You'll be known in the future as the lady that brings the cloud. So the glory shall fall. The glory shall fall. It shall be like the days of Pentecost on fire on Azusa Street. Curiosity. People come and hear you sing under that glory cloud. Some will see it, some will not. But it will be manifest from my glory. Yes. 
says the Lord of hosts. You see, folks, here's what people understand. Not bringing anything to the prophet's office. But as a general rule, the prophet has to prophesy for it to come to pass. Yeah. It won't come to pass just because it's God's will. For I must in all flesh, your son does prophesy, as the prophet Joel said. Yeah. The prophet has to say it in the earth. Right. He has to believe it in the earth. Then God can bring it to pass. Mm-hmm. Had something happen to me in Lock Lavish. Canadian people just, they'll just suck the juice out of you. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a night where I prophesied to everybody in the house. I have never done that before. And so, God does some strange things. I mean, not strange, just higher level things. And so, we want to flow with that. And we want you to get everything that God has for you in this crusade. Amen? Amen. We will give the Lord another shout, everybody. Hallelujah. Why don't we check with the Holy Ghost and see if he's done? God shall make the crooked places straight. I resist this melancholy spirit that would rob you of joy. Depression has to go. Anxiety has to go. Frustration has to go. Your past is gone. Wiped clean by the blood. All the past is now gone. Receive the goodness of the Lord for your future is right. If you'll just turn loose from the past. Y'all, you felt guilty and felt shame. But let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You'll never be the same. (laughs) There's the power. There's the power. It's flowing in you now. It's flowing in you now. As you weep at the Master's feet, your weeping shall be turned to joy. In the morning, joy shall come. You shall dance and laugh and shout. Because victory has already been won. Keep him on your mind. And you'll not come behind. Thank you, Lord. Sissy. The devil's even told you life's not worth living. Said nobody cares. I said, you'd be better off dead. You've even thought about it. You foul melancholy spirit, I bind you in Jesus' name. I command the spirit of the living God to rise up within her. She is a daughter of Almighty God. She is a princess of heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ, take every lying symptom out of her. In Jesus' name. Devil, go now. Go in Jesus' name. You're free, sister. You're free. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I want you to laugh for me. 
That's the best you got. <laughs> Laughter does good like a medicine. I write your prescription. I want you to laugh for three days, at least a half an hour a day. On the third day, your belly will laugh. You'll have a belly laugh. It becomes so strong, you'll put your hands on your belly. Good old fashioned belly laugh. <laughs> all the depression will leave, all the angst will leave, all the anxiety will leave. You'll do it yourself. You'll laugh at famine and laugh at destruction and laugh at what the devil's trying to do because God has already answered your prayer in Jesus' name. <laughs> so laugh. Don't laugh at me, laugh with me. <laughs> if you need help laughing, get one of your old school pictures and put it in that That will help you laugh. You laugh all the way home. <laughs>
it'll be awesome. And uh, uh, Brother Begley, you just pick up where he left off tonight. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much for coming. God bless you.